All right, it's gonna be a long video. Items can have many different stat rolls and depending on what combination of gear items you're looking to run with, well, that's going to influence on what type of stat rolls you want a little bit. But the division is designed in a very specific way so that players cannot get too strong in just one area. Uh, we can take a look at the caps on the skills, for example. At a certain skill power, the skills will not get any better. Or we can look at the critical hit chance, which is kept at 60%, or maybe the armor cap for the tanky player, which is of course kept at 75%. All of these caps limit the player in one thing or another. Now, with this in mind, it is for most players and most builds also crucial that at least a few of these caps are met. In the end game, you will never really see a player without the armor cap, and you will never really see skill power builds that are not capped out, and you will find very few players with a lower than 50% critical hit chance. This is simply because of how the game was designed. It makes it so that solo players are not completely irrelevant when trying to complete certain actions. You can kind of be a jack of all trades and the game actually supports you for being one. Now, what I'm going to show you today is the guide to getting all of these statistics pretty much to the cap or as close to the cap as possible while sacrificing the very least of everything else. Simply put, I'm going to give you a best in slot gear guide. And for this, it doesn't matter what gear sets you're going to use. That really depends on what you want to run with. I mean, maybe with the next patch, some new gear sets will be introduced and those will be the most powerful, but then this guide will still be very helpful to you. If you quickly want to know which stat rolls you should go for on what items, and you don't want my explanation and my reasoning behind these choices, you can pause the video at any moment right now as the attributes that you ideally want to roll on each item will be going over the screen. However, if you want to know why I choose certain stats on certain items and want to know how I came to these conclusions, then you can watch the rest of this video where everything will be explained in more detail. But before we jump into the six different gear types, I want to go over what you need to get on your gear mods. Gear mods might usually be seen as an afterthought. Uh, the general opinion that a lot of people may have is I need an item and the more mod slots it has, the better. But uh, most of the gear items actually require you to give up major attributes in order to get a mod slot and that may not be worth it in some cases. Now, knowing what a gear mod can actually do for your character in the best case scenario, that is very important so that then we can later decide if we actually want to give up a major attribute for a mod slot or not. So, which gear mods are we getting and what stats should they have? First and foremost, I'd like to say that you should completely forget about performance mods. Most of the performance mods boost skills in ways that skill power would do as well. Uh, and the bonuses do not go beyond the cap. That means that if you only have one guy in your group running with a skill power build, performance mods will lose almost all of their value since uh, the stronger version of any given skill will always override the weaker one. In some odd scenarios, while you're maybe running solo with a pulse critical hit damage performance mod, that might give you a little bit of a tiny more burst damage than a firearms main step mod would do. But in PvP, a conceal would deflect all of the damage and you would get zero value out of that when your pulse is on cooldown. Now for that reason, and a few others I'm not going too much in depth about right now, I recommend staying away from the performance mods despite them being buffed with this recent patch. So what should we be looking at when talking about gear mods then? What are the options? Um, well, we have to of course choose between any of the three main stats, that is firearms, stamina or electronics, uh, and then for the second bonus, there are seven possible options. We have crit chance, armor, health, exotic damage resilience, skill haste, skill power, and last up, signature skill, resource gain. Those are the things that you can roll on a mod. The second bonus is often overlooked by a lot of players, but it's actually uh, one of the most important things. So we're going to start off by looking into which one of the second bonuses is the best. A lot of you watching this might instantly jump to the conclusion that you will need to go with critical hit chance for that extra damage. Uh, some others here might say that the exotic damage resilience is better because it protects you from explosive bullets, flamethrowers and grenade damage. However, I believe that when skill power is an availability to roll, uh, you should roll it 100% of the time. There are a few reasons for this, with the first one being that skill power on gear, and gear mods in general, roll in absurdly high amounts. Uh, if you for example compare it with the possible amount of health that you can roll, uh, you will see that you can get anywhere between 658 and 807. That amount of health is the same amount of health that you would have gotten from uh, 22 to 27 stamina, that's a very, very small amount. So, you know, therefore we're not ever gonna get health. 
However, skill power can be rolled from 1316 to 1614, which equals the 131 to 161 electronics. Now that is just as much as you can roll on the main stat. So essentially, if you're rolling skill power as the second bonus, you're getting a main stat boost twice. The second reason why I think you should run with skill power uh, instead of anything else is because it kind of does everything that the other bonuses can provide, granted you of course run with the pulse and the first eight. For example, 1500 skill power gives you almost a full percentage of critical hit chance on your pulse, which isn't as good as a base 1.5% normal critical hit chance, but you also get 2% extra critical hit damage. Another option on the list is the 3% skill haste, which according to the formula that I created a while ago, reduces your skill cooldowns by 2.91%. For the pulse with the tactical scanner mod that can shave off anywhere from 1.89 seconds to 0.58 seconds. It really depends how high your skill power already is, as the skill haste is added multiplicative on top of the cooldown that you get from the raw skill power. The 1500 skill power in itself reduces the tactical scanner pulse cooldown by a flat 1.46 seconds every single time. And thus, unless you literally have no skill power whatsoever, or if you are already kept at the skill power, then skill haste is not the way to go. So how does signature skill resource gain fare against this? Well, it is pretty difficult to check. All I can say right now is that 1500 skill power reduces your signature skill cooldown by 18.7 seconds every single time. It's additive. But as we figured out in my skill cooldown reduction video, resource gain only takes effect when getting the final blow on targets. It's not passive. So I would argue that skill power is more effective at reducing your signature skill cooldown than resource gain when playing in a group, since your teammates will more often than not get the final shot on someone and then resource gain is a complete waste. So the only things that are left on the list are skill power, armor and exotic damage resilience. Now I would avoid using mods with armor in general simply because of the fact that with some decent rolls on your main stat gear and uh, armor rolled in the right places, you will be able to hit the armor cap without ever using any armor mods. It isn't bad to use armor mods to cap out on certain things while you're building your character, but the end result should not require you to need any extra armor mods. And then we have the exotic damage resilience. Now, a lot of people think that exotic damage resilience is the only defense that players have to explosive bullets, sticky bombs, grenades and flamethrowers and all that stuff. But that's not entirely true because normal armor also mitigates that damage. Exotic damage mitigation is just another mitigation multiplier on top of that. So should we take it? Well, it's a little bit situational to be honest. Um, but if you value exotic damage mitigation that much uh, and you don't want to be blown up by people with sticky bombs and explosive ammo, then I highly recommend getting the two piece for the final measures gear set. It will give you 50% exotic damage resilience and will prevent anyone from one shotting you. And yes, more exotic damage resilience is nice, but giving up the extra skill power is just not worth for only having 3% extra. There are better ways to go about getting more of this and I'll show you soon how. Now for the main stat that you want to roll on these mods, that's either going to have to be firearms or stamina, but I myself would lean towards a little bit of extra stamina, mainly because the health rolls on our gear in general, just like the health rolls on these gear mods, come in very, very low amounts, so the only effective way of increasing your health is through stamina. For damage, that's not entirely the case, because we have some very good options for critical hit chance and critical hit damage rolls later on into the video, so firearms isn't the only source of upping your damage. And this together establishes what our mods will be. Stamina main stat with skill power as the second bonus. And every time we're giving up a major attribute on any gear item for a mod slot, um, we have to take in mind that this is what we're getting in return. So now it's time to move over to the gear items and see how we should roll each of these. Um, as far as main stats go, this guide isn't very difficult to follow. All that you really need to look out for is a three stat holster and then you can put firearms or stamina on the rest of your gear depending on how tanky or how damage heavy you really want to be. I'm leaving that up to you. You can go with full stamina, full firearms or anything more balanced in between. The only thing that you absolutely want to avoid as a main stat roll is electronics and that is simply because there are so many better ways to get your skill power up without sacrificing any damage or any toughness. And thus if you want to have the best of it all, it is better to avoid electronic rolls altogether. Again, except of course on the holster. You want to get a 3 stat holster there. 
But um, besides the main stats, every item has major, minor and skill attributes. However, getting any minor or skill attributes that I'm going to mention is absolutely not a necessity. Minor and skill attributes can be 100% ignored when looking at your gear stats, but I'll mention a few good ones for each gear set item anyway, because, you know, there are always those perfectionists out there that uh, have nothing better to do than, I guess, min-maxing everything to heaven. I used to be one of those and, uh, and then I gave up. Anyway, let's start off with the body armor. Every body armor piece has three major attributes, one minor attribute and one skill attribute. For the three major attributes, there are six possibilities. You can get extra armor, health, HP on kill, exotic damage resilience, protection from elites and damage versus elites. The armor that you can roll on the chess piece is the highest armor in the entire game. The minimum that you get on 240 gear pieces is higher than the maximum amount that you can get on any other item. So armor here is a must have to reach the cap. Health on the other hand is again rolled in very, very, very low amounts. 3390 health is equal to 113 stamina. That is lower than the amount of health that you would get from a stamina main mod. This is straight up bad in every way and you should avoid this at all costs. HP on kill can be good in some situations, but it is just that. It's very situational. Um, the thing is, HP on kill is best with a lot of health. That is because it is percentage based of your own maximum health. But in a real scenario, you will be able to get the final kill on enemies much more often with a lot of damage. Therefore, this attribute is very much contradicting its own use and it ends up being a lot more situational than you would initially think. It's kind of hard to explain because it's a very snowball -y statistic, so to speak. It pretty much means that if you're winning and if you're doing well in a mission, you're only going to win harder and do even more well. But on the opposite, if you're not doing so well and if you're having a lot of trouble, then it does absolutely nothing to help you out. I can only see this being valuable for the player that plays a lot of solo and that doesn't really go into the dark zone. So unless you're that kind of player, avoid HP on kill. 12 to 15% exotic damage resilience is good to have, but is it better than the health and the skill power that you get if you were to get a mod instead of this? Well, the thing is, that really depends, because just like armor, exotic damage mitigation gets stronger per percentage the more you have of it. So if you're planning to run with a two-piece final measure and already have the 50% mitigation as a base, then it is really worth taking this. However, if you're not running with a two-piece final measure, then avoid this at all costs. Sure, the 12% as a base might help you mitigate just a bit more of that flamethrower or sticky bomb damage, but the damage mitigation is a lot more situational than the health and the skill power that you're getting if you would replace this with a mod. Now last up on the list we have damage versus elites and protection from elites and this is by far, by far the worst statistic that you can roll on your end game gear. You might think that this will come in handy during the incursion and all that stuff uh, and you're right about that, no doubt it does help out and this is really good when you're not maxed out yet because stacking this statistic on a few of your items uh, that might be the difference between you getting one shot out in the incursion and surviving the waves of enemies. However, this is a guide to end game gear, gear score 204 and 240 items. And when you're at that level, the extra protection versus and against elites is simply not needed anymore. You're much better off with that extra health and skill power that you get from a mod because that will make you a little bit more tanky and more powerful overall, not just versus elites versus every type of enemy and of course versus players as well. So the conclusion is, is that for the chess piece, you would want to get extra armor as a major attribute and then two empty mod slots. However, if you're planning on running two-piece final measure, then I strongly recommend getting the extra exotic damage resilience instead of one of the mod slots. As beyond the 50% mark, uh, those percentages will actually start to make a, a substantial difference. As far as minor and skill attributes go, I already said that they don't really matter at all, but uh, for the perfectionist watching this video, on the minor you can only have one of two things. You can have ammo capacity or kill experience. I myself, I would probably favor ammo capacity, but that's because I already have Dark Zone rank 99. If you're still not at that level yet, kill experience might be the better choice here. Again, really doesn't matter. Uh, and then for skill attributes, the chess piece can roll nine different skill attributes. And it kind of depends on what skills you're usually rolling with. Uh, but since this build kind of assumes that you're going with the pulse in the first eight, because, you know, those are by far the most common options right now, there are only two things that you want to take here. Either you go with the pulse duration or you go with the first eight self heal. 
Again, these bonuses do not go beyond the hard cap on the scales, and they're not mandatory at all. Do not use your reroll on this, guys. Moving on to the next item, we have the Mask. The Mask always rolls with one Major, one Minor, and one Skill Attribute, but in addition to that, it will also always have a mod slot by default. Just like the body armor, the mask has six possibilities when it comes down to what majors it can roll. It has critical hit chance, damage versus elites, health, HP on kill, exotic damage resilience, and skill power. As I mentioned when I was talking about the mods, we should always roll skill power when skill power is available, simply because of the fact that it rolls in absurdly high amounts. 4,158 to 5,098 skill power is the equivalent of 416 to 510 electronics. That's almost as much as you can have if you were to roll electronics as the main stat on your mask. For that reason alone, this is a must have. HP on kill and health are no good options and I already explained why. Exotic damage resilience isn't really worth giving up the skill power for unless you're going full tank. And the 4-5% to critical hit chance do not even come close to how good this amount of skill power is. Because with 4500 skill power, which is about the average that you can get with this roll, uh, you get about 3% critical hit chance on your pulls, almost 6% critical hit damage on your pulls, and you shave off about 4.5 seconds off the cooldown. On top of that, your heal is of course also increased by quite a lot. Your signature skill comes back almost a minute quicker. I can keep throwing and throwing numbers at you, but let's not make this video longer than it already is. If you don't already have two or three people in your squad that are maxed out on skill power regardless and can give you everything that you need in terms of pulses, smart cover and all that stuff, skill power is the obvious choice here. The mess can actually roll six different minor attributes as well. Um, I would probably favor enemy armor damage or burn resistance here, but honestly, it really doesn't matter that much. The different type of resistances just lower the chances of you actually getting hurt by it, but uh, with uh, incendiary bullets, you're always going to be put on fire regardless. And I just choose enemy armor damage because, hey, why not? Again, it really doesn't matter. Uh, for the skill attributes, you have, again, nine different options, uh, but you only want one thing really, and that is the pulse critical hit chance. Then we get to the knee pads. This thing always rolls two majors, three minors, and one skill attribute. Again, just like with the body armor and the mask, six different majors can be rolled. This time we have critical hit damage, armor, health, exotic damage resilience, protection from elites, and damage versus elites. Although the extra armor that you can roll is relatively low on the knee pads, you will still need to get this in order to more easily hit the armor cap. It is still by far a better choice than getting extra armor on the gear mods and picking it up on the knee pads isn't that much of a problem as there really aren't that much other great options here either. For example, health is again an option but it is rolled in such low amounts that it's not even worth looking at. Protection and damage versus elites is not ideal here uh, for, you know, previously discussed reasons. Uh, but the knee pads can actually roll two major attributes. Uh, we already have the armor so the only thing that we have to look at right now is if we want a mod slot, critical hit damage, or exotic damage resilience. And to be honest with you, this is a personal preference. I myself, I think I would go for another mod slot to give myself a little more health and even more skill power. But of course, if you're more of a damage oriented player, then crit damage might be good for you. Uh, and if you already have the two-piece final measure, then exotic damage resilience might be the way to go here. Either one of these is fine, just make sure that you actually have armor as well. The miners are not that important here, you can only roll three of them, and they're all good in different situations. Personally, I would aim for the bleed resistance, burn resistance, and shock resistance, but it really doesn't matter that much. For the skill attribute, you want to go with uh, the pulse critical hit damage, and if you play in a team a lot, then getting the first eight ally heals also not the end of the world. Next up we have the backpack. The backpack always comes with one major, one minor, two skill attributes, and it also always has a mod slot, just like the mask. Uh, for the major, we only have five possibilities this time, uh, with the first one being critical hit damage, uh, the second one armor, then we have skill haste, skill power, and signature skill resource gain. There isn't much to say here that I haven't already said. The amount of skill power that you can get here is disgustingly high, and it will do exactly what the resource gain and the skill haste does, but it does it better and it does more things. I've got to admit that the critical hit damage is nice to have as well, but we only get to pick one of them here, and unless you're always playing in a group where people have maxed out skill power anyway, the skill power is an obvious choice here. Now the backpack also has the possibility of rolling four different miners, and there isn't really a bad choice here. Uh, the debuff effect resistances are all nice to have, but if I were to make a choice, I would probably pick ammo capacity, simply because I'm quite lazy and... Uh, 
And in the dark zone, you know, ammunition can become a problem after a little while of uh, not going to a safe house. For the skill attributes, there are actually 22 options here, so good luck on, you know, getting something relevant here. But if anything, you want to try to get the pulse critical hit damage, the pulse critical hit chance, uh, the first aid self heal, or the pulse duration. All of those options are nice to have. The gloves are actually quite unique, as they can roll 3 major attributes, but you cannot exchange any of those for any mod slots. They also have zero minor attributes and only one skill attribute. The majors you want to get on this depend for a little bit on what weapons you run with often. The two things that you always want to get are the critical hit damage and the critical hit chance, simply because they are rolled in very high amounts, higher than on any other item in the game. But whether you want to get sniper damage, SMG damage, shotgun damage, you know, all that stuff, that of course depends on what weapon you use the most often. As I said, the gloves have no minor attributes, so we can skip that, and for the skill attribute, you want to go with either the first aid self heal or the pulse critical hit damage again. Those are your best options. And then finally, we arrive at the last part of this guide, and that is the holster. Now, because we have a three stat holster, that means that we can only have one major attribute on it and no mod slot. That is completely fine, though, because there's only one thing that we need, and that is the extra armor. Skill haste, protection from elites or extra pistol damage are simply not as good as being able to max out on armor and this holster allows you to do just that. The holster also doesn't have any miners and for the skill attributes you want to go for only one thing and that is yet again the pulse critical hit damage. Everybody, this is the definitive guide on how you should build your character in the division. No matter what gear set combinations you want, you will always want to be rolling these specific things. I hope that this helped everybody get on their way and maybe change their perspective a little bit in, uh, in this area or another. As always, I will see you guys later, or like they say in the Netherlands, see you later!